In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make calculations, but express those calculations with the correct amount of uh, precision. And so that's why we call this calculations and precision. Well, we're going to do some uh, uh, math problems here, and we're going to start with some addition and subtraction problems. Now, the rule that we're going to follow is this here that's in red. The answer to an addition or subtraction problem can only have as many decimal places as the factor with the fewest number of decimal places. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's try a couple examples. Here's a, a very simple math problem. 43.156 uh, plus 55.934. If you uh, type that into your calculator, you get an answer of about 99.09. You can type that in and see that that's what you get. Well, we want to look at the decimal places here. Now, this first number has three decimal places, and the second number has three decimal places also. And so that means that our answer has to also have three decimal places. But as you can see, the way it's written, it only has two. So we have to add a third decimal place there and call this 99.090. And that's how we express the answer with the correct level of, of uh, precision. Now here's another math problem. This is a, an addition problem this time. If we take those two numbers and we add them together, uh, your calculator answer is going to be about 211.311. And so once again, we have to look at decimal places. So the first number seems to have two decimal places, and the next one has three decimal places. It goes out to the thousands place. Now whenever there's a conflict, we always go with the least. So like in the rule said, the, uh, the fewest number of decimal places. So that means our answer can only have two decimal places. And so we have to stop after that hundredths place and then the next decimal place would be used for rounding. And so the 1 means that we round down. And so the answer that we're going to report is 211.31. You might remember from your math classes that when it's time to round, numbers from 0 through 4 uh, cause you to round down. Numbers from 5 through 9 cause you to round up. Here's another problem. This is a subtraction this time, but subtraction works the same way as addition does. So if we type this into our calculator, I get an answer of about 253.1. And we have to count decimal places again. So this number has two decimal places, and the next one has one decimal place. And the rule is we always go with the fewest. And so the answer can only have one decimal place, and sure enough, this actually does have one decimal place as it is. So we can accept that answer, 253.1. Let's try another example here. This is another addition problem, and when we type these numbers into our calculator, the answer you get is about 199.998. And once again, we look at decimal places. So we have a number with two decimal places at the beginning, and then we have a number with three decimal places. So can you guess how many decimal places our answer will have to have? I hope you said two. We always go with the fewest. So that means we're going to have to round this off to two decimal places. So there's the first one, there's the second. We have to stop there, and the very next number is used for rounding. And so since this is an eight, are we going to round up or down? Now we're going to round up. And so that makes this 9 here a 0, and then that bumps this up to a 0. In fact, the way we round this, this is going to be 200.00. So that's the, the correct answer that we would report. So that's how you, you express an answer with the correct level of precision if you're adding or subtracting. But what about if you're multiplying and dividing? Well, the rule is a little bit different. Instead of counting decimal places, we count significant figures. Now, if you need a refresher on significant figures, you can look at a, a previous lesson about that. Uh, the answer can only have as many significant figures 
as the factor with the fewest number of significant figures. So let's try an example with that. Here we have 3.204 times 0 0.080. So when you type that into your calculator, your calculator answer is 0.25632. But we have to count significant figures. So this first number has four significant figures. Remember, middle zeros are significant. And then the next number has two significant figures. Remember, leading zeros are not significant. Ending zeros are significant if there's a decimal point. So we have two in that one. So how many significant figures should our answer have? Well, just like in the last example, remember we always go with the fewest if there's a conflict. So we're going to have two significant figures in our answer. And so we know that that leading zero is not significant, but the two and the five are. So we have to stop after that and we use the next number for rounding purposes. And so since it's a six, do we round up or down? Well, five through 9 means it rounds up. So this is going to become a 6. And so the answer that we would report is 0.26. And that's the correct answer with the, with the right number of significant figures. Here's another example. This is a division this time. 76,000 divided by 8.32. Now when you enter this into your calculator, the answer that you get is 9,134.32. 615385. And sometimes on a test or a lab, we'll have students that will report all of these digits. But we know that this is not really a, a sensible answer. No one actually reported out to the out to the to the millionths place there. So uh, we have to uh, to to take some of these out. Well, the first number has two significant figures. Remember, ending zeros are not significant. If you don't see a decimal point, so two significant figures. We have this other one with three significant figures. So how many significant figures will our answer have? Well, we always go with the fewest, so the answer is two. And so the nine is significant, the one is, but at, beyond that we have to round. And so how do you round off 9134.615385 to the nearest hundreds place? Well, the 3 means this rounds down. It's 9,100, not 91. Remember, you're rounding it to the hundreds place. So those, those two zeros are there. Uh, they're placeholders, uh, 9,100. Don't leave off those placeholders. They're not significant, but uh, they're kind of important for the value. So let's try another example. Here's a multiplication. We have this math problem. If you type that into your calculator, it's about 100.097 is what I get. And so once again, we're counting significant figures. So in the first value here, we have three significant figures. That middle zero is significant. And then we also have three significant figures in this next factor. So how many significant figures should be in our answer? Well, we want to be consistent, so we should have three significant figures in the answer. Well, that one is significant, and then we have those next two digits, and we have to stop after that. We use the, the next digit for rounding. So 100.0, the zero rounds down to 100. Now we have a little problem here, because if we just write it as 100, you might recall that that only has one significant figure. So how do you write the number 100 so that it really has three significant figures? Well, there are a couple of ways. Actually, three ways I can think of. You can stick a decimal point, a visible decimal point there at the end, so that it's obvious that you have three significant figures here. That's one way of doing this. Another way is to write it in scientific notation. If you write the number like this, 1.00 times 10 to the second, it's the same value and it's obvious that you have three significant figures. Here's another way to write it with three significant figures. You write the number 100 and just put a little horizontal line over that last significant figure. 
that also is a way of showing that that digit and everything before it is significant. So three different ways of writing the number 100 so that it's obvious that it's, it's got three significant figures and not just one. Let's try another example. We have 300.0 times 3.000. If you type this number into your calculator, you get an answer of 900. And the first number, we have some ending zeros with a decimal point. They're all significant. So that's four significant figures right there. And then we have the three with the ending zeros. So that's also four significant figures. And so that means our answer has to have four significant figures also. But as it stands, 900 really only has one. So how do you make that number have four significant figures? Well, probably the easiest way is to put a decimal point and then a zero at the end so that now all of these zeros become significant. So that's the correct answer, 900.0. Let's try one more example. This one is a little bit more challenging. Here we have uh, two operations going on at the same time. Now from your math class, um, your algebra classes, hopefully you've learned about something called order of operations, which means that if you have a multiplication and an addition in the same problem, we do the multiplication part of it first. So it's almost like we have understood parentheses around that part of the problem. Now if you type in 9.6, times 3.45 into your calculator, the answer that you get is about 33.12. And this multiplication has to be done separately before we even think about that addition. So we have to use the rules for significant figures here. 9.6 has two significant figures. You know, we've got two non-zero numbers there. And then we have three non-zero numbers here, so that's three significant figures. We always go with the least, so that means we can only have two significant figures in that answer right there. So we have to take the, the first two threes there and then round off based upon that one. And a one means it's going to be rounded down. So our answer that we report for that part of the problem is 33. Now I'm, I can pull down the rest of this and do the addition. So we have 1.45 plus 33. And the calculator answer for that part of it is 34.45. But since we're adding, we have to look at decimal places. So the 1.45 has two decimal places, and then 33 actually has zero decimal places. So we always go with the least, which means our answer can only have, well, zero decimal places. So we have to stop at the ones place and then that 4 is used for rounding purposes. And if it's a 4, that means we round down. And so the answer that we're going to report is just 34. Now, this is a case where order of operations is very important. Because if you had just typed this problem into your calculator, you would have gotten a different answer. Something that would, have, that would not have rounded off correctly. And so by following these rules for addition and subtraction, counting decimal places, and multiplication and division, counting significant figures, you can do almost any calculation and express the answer to the, the correct level of precision.